Hey guys, this is Andrew with HKN, and uh, I'm going to talk more about Fourier series today, uh, particularly how to plot the magnitude and phase of the coefficients for a Fourier series. And we're going to use last week's, um, last week's results as a starting point. So last week we had this function here, f of t, um, with amplitude uh, 4 and 4 pi, what we call a sawtooth wave. Um, and we found that this uh, f of t can be expressed as a Fourier series in this way. The one mistake that I made was I said that this was e to the j pi. That was a mistake um, because j is actually um, e to the j pi over 2, not pi. e to the j pi is negative 1, um, which will come up later. Um, negative 1 equals e to the j pi. So what we're going to do here is we're going to plot um, the magnitude of Cn versus n, and also the phase angle of Cn versus n. So we know that at our n equals 0 component, we just have, or our k equals 0 component, n or k is the same, um, we just have 2. So we know this guy is at an initial height of 2. And this plot, because n is only uh, integer valued, this plot is a discrete valued plot. So we have a stem plot. So at 2. Now we know that this is our Cn term here, because this is our e to the j omega 0 t. Um, so these are our Cn's. So the e to the j value here is only for our phase. So the phase angle of Cn is equal to e to the j pi over 2. So that means that the angle is actually just equal to pi over 2. And I'm going to add this plus theta here for a reason I'll talk about later. The magnitude of Cn on the other hand, is what's being multiplied, is what's multiplying your E function here, or what we call the modulus. So the modulus here is just 2 over pi n. But we want the absolute value of this. But what, but what you might be thinking now is n goes from negative infinity to positive infinity. How do you account for the negative here? Well, that's what this theta is. Theta here, theta is going to equal to 0 when n is greater than 0 and negative pi for n less than 0. And the reason for that being that because negative 1 is equal to e to the j pi. So we introduce that pi when you multiply things together uh, that are in the e function, so we would have e to the j pi over 2 times e to the j pi. Um, I guess it would be, you can make it plus or minus pi. It doesn't really matter because things cycle around at 360. Um, I'll, I'll make it negative, I guess, um, because I kept that convention down here. Um, when we, if we multiply these together, we get pi over 2 for n greater than 0 because there is no negative 1. But when, pi, when n is less than 0, we get this negative 1. And we can just add in that phase there of negative pi, making it e to the j negative pi over 2. So very quickly, we can draw the phase plot because we know that it's going to be a constant pi over 2, pi over 2. Um, and there's no phase at 0 because we just have a 2. So for n greater than 0, so it would be 1, 2, 3, 4, so on. It's just going to be a constant pi over 2. Sorry if my graphs are less than straight. Um, and then when we get to the negative side, we have a negative pi over 2 for negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, and negative 4. So we have these guys. And again, these are discrete valued plots. 
because n only exists at integer values, so you have to do a stem plot. Um, now we can talk about the phase plot, not the phase plot, the magnitude plot very quickly. And so it's the magnitude of 2 pi over n. So we know it starts at 2, and then it follows at 2 pi over n. So what's going to happen there is we find, uh, we find that it's going to do a kind of 1 over n thing on both sides. So it's going to do something like that. For 1, 2, 3, 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. Uh, we can make that more symmetric. Hopefully we can make that more symmetric. Close enough. Um, better at least. So these guys would be decreasing in magnitude the further you get away from zero. Again, this is a, dis and it's symmetric about zero. Uh, which would make sense because negative frequencies and positive frequencies uh, are relatively the same minus a phase shift. All right, so uh, if you want to calculate what some of these values are, we can say that the magnitude of C1 equal to the magnitude of C of negative 1 is equal to 2 over pi. Plug in the 1 there. C2 magnitude equals C negative 2 magnitude, which gets us 2 over pi times 2, which is just 1 over pi. And C3 equal to C minus 3 equals 2 over pi times 3, which is equal to 2 over 3 pi. So what we see here is that we're losing 1 pi every time. Is that right? Doesn't, no, never mind. That doesn't seem to make sense. Um, but the general formula here is this. Um, so you can calculate as many values as you want, and that's what corresponds to these values. We can do one more because I did up to 4. Uh, magnitude of C of negative 4 is just 2 over pi times 4, which is in this case 1 over 2 pi. So that's what's happening as we go down. You see that the numbers are decreasing. We start with 2 pi, 1 pi, 2 uh, two thirds pi, um, 1 half, 1 over pi. When I say pi, I meant 1 over pi. Um, but that trend would continue to infinity and beyond. Um, but the phase plot is always a constant value for this uh, for this Fourier series. Um, and you can do this for uh, any Fourier series that you happen to find. Uh, you can plot the magnitude and phase of the CNs and it tells you what the frequency components um, are doing generally. So what this says is that because our value at Cn, where n equals 0, is our highest magnitude. That's uh, 2 pi. The other ones are uh, over 2 pi. This one's 2. Because it has our highest value, it means that mo a lot of this function's energy is focused around the DC component. And, it, um, and as you go into higher frequency components, less of the function is situated there. Um, so if you were to high pass filter or low pass filter this, sorry, if you were to low pass filter this uh, wave function, um, you would still maintain a general idea of what's going on with this wave. You would lose some of the sharper edges, but you would still get mainly this wave. If you were to high pass filter it, you probably would lose a lot of the information here, um, if that makes sense, because most of the information, most of the energy is stored at lower frequencies. Um, that's why these are useful and this is how you do it. So I hope you guys learned something and have a good day.